Hi, as, as AJ said, I am the uh, fairly new vice president at Ecosense. Um, just to give you a quick background on me, I uh, back in about 1990, my uh, business partner and I started um, a, a radon monitor manufacturing and leasing company called Rattlelink, which you you still in business. Um, my partner and I had a um, a divorce back around 2000, um, uh, end of 2007, and and um, I went my, my way, and he uh, retained the company, and um, I did did a few other things for a while, including some training, and then in 2017, in January that year, I became the executive director of Arst and NRPP, um, and I I retired from that just. Um, at the end of July in, um, uh, excuse me, in the end of June this year. And so in, in uh, July, I should say last year, it is 2023. And in uh, July, I came on board with Ecosense. And there's a reason uh, for that. I had been looking at their detector technology since I first saw it um, and realized, wow, this company has put together a very... Um, um, a, a very, very good radon sensor uh, in, in, uh, in, in their monitor uh, production. And um, I'm so impressed by it. I, I, I talked to them uh, several times uh, to get more information and, and then I uh, was invited to come on board with them. Um, so, so that's why I'm here. Um, their detector technology is not only uh, the best available for, particularly unless you're willing to spend about 7000 dollars for a monitor um it's it's also um uh very very affordable and um less less uh, expensive than some units that uh, are very well known out there in the radon testing business that uh, don't perform nearly as well so that's a little bit about me i i see we have uh uh almost 24 people i think that have joined so i thank you for taking the time to join me uh so i'm gonna go ahead and get started here and share my screen. So what we're going to be talking about today are some surefire ways to sell more radon tests. And, and I, as I said, I've been at this a long time and home inspection, uh, the home inspection industry does more radon testing than any single group because it's an ancillary service um, for uh, a whole lot of home inspectors across the country. And, and that's a function of the fact that uh, back around 1992, the EPA uh, decided they wanted to uh, encourage people to do radon testing and came out with protocols for testing uh, within the time constraints of a real estate transaction. Uh, so that's true in, in the United States. A lot of what I'm going to be talking about are ways you would do that there. But I, I did notice we had a fellow who said hello from Alberta, Canada. And so I don't want to leave you out. Um, as I go through this, I'll, I'll mention some things that uh, perhaps will be helpful to you in, in your market, uh, even though the the, the protocols and, and recommendations from Health Canada are a little different than they are in the United States from the Environmental Protection Agency. So the, um, the first one on the list of these six ways that you can uh, sell more radon tests is to don't wait for them to ask. And I bring this one up because I was I was at the Internachi uh, conference uh, this this past uh, year, um, late in the year, uh, out in uh, California. Maybe some of you were there, and I was hearing home inspectors tell me that they just don't get many calls for radon uh, in their area. And I've I've heard that for years, and I wanted to address it. Um, and it really comes down to this. If you wait for them to ask, you're probably not going to get many calls, particularly in a lot of the markets um, that you may serve. Um, and, and the reason is simple. Uh, people know to get a home inspection because their real estate agent tells them to, that that's a good idea unless, um, uh, except for perhaps in some cases. And, and uh, But they don't really know about ancillary services and they don't really understand radon and they've got a lot going on. Uh, when they're purchasing a house, and um, if someone doesn't bring it up to them, uh, then they're not going to think to ask for it. Um, so the the other part of that is even if you ask them, hey, would you like me to do a radon test as part of my home inspection? 
most people are ignorant enough about the radon health risk that um, they're they're probably just going to decline, figuring you're trying to just you know make an extra buck, and they don't really understand it. And and people um, are not willing sometimes to to be straightforward and say, hey, I don't really understand why I should have one. Why don't you take a minute and tell me? So my advice to you, for what it's worth, um, is to treat a radon test as a natural thing that's always going to occur as part of a home inspection. And so make the your question instead of would you like a radon test, ask them if um, if they have scheduled someone else to do their radon test or um, if, if they've got somebody else to do uh, the test for them. So um, as you see here in this slide, am I doing your radon test or have you arranged that with a testing firm? Um, if they kind of step back and say, well, no, I don't have somebody else to do that, then then just be um, upfront with them and tell them that, of course, you need a radon test. And the reason is that EPA and state health department recommend all home buyers test for radon because it is a, a group A carcinogen, um, and uh, which means it's, it's a proven uh, carcinogen, a proven health risk to human beings, not just animals. And uh, it's the number one cause of lung cancer in people who don't smoke. And, and then just move right into to the fact that you can do it along with your home inspection for an additional, however much you want to charge, and save them from having to hire somebody else to do the test. Now, I, um, I, I have experience from this from back in, in the 90s when I actually used to do some radon testing. I have experience with this with um, customers even back in the day I had my other businesses. And um, and they found that this does work um, as long as you uh, are consistent with your approach. But the but the other part of this is you probably have people, or if you will if you if you're just getting started and you're growing, um, that uh, answer the phones for you and talk to clients as they as they call into the office and and say you know they'd like to hire you to do home inspections. So take the time to train your customer support staff, those people who who uh, answer the phone uh, to make the same pitch. Um, so are we doing your radon test or have you scheduled that with a radon testing firm? And um, that, that may take them off guard. And, and again, you need to train uh, your, your staff to, to say, well, absolutely, you need to have this done uh, for the same reasons and, and make the same pitch. We can do it as part of the home inspection and save you from having to call someone else. The, the second thing that I see, and I, I, I took some time and looked through a lot of home inspector websites uh, as I prepared for this webinar and to see what they have on their websites about radon as an ancillary. And, and what I found is a lot of um, uh, home inspectors refer to the EPA zone map and uh, maybe even have a link or a picture to it. And, and they use that as a way to make a case that, uh, oh, there's, there's a lot of radon in this state. Um, and, and, and then if they're in a state where they, maybe the zone map doesn't look uh, like it's very promising for finding high radon, uh, then uh, maybe they don't pursue it as much or they're bashful to bring it up or, or, or whatnot. Um, just to fill you in on that EPA zone map, it was it was really created based on the 1988 Indoor Radon Act um, that Congress passed um, that included a mandate for EPA to put together a map to help prioritize where uh, their efforts uh, to promote uh, radon testing as a as a um, important issue and the health risk associated with radon. Um, you know, sort of where to begin to sort of prioritize the focus. And at the time, they only had about 5,700 radon tests performed across the entire United States. So uh, if you spread that across 50 states, um, they didn't have many tests per state uh, to make any, any real strong decisions on how um, great the, the risk of finding radon was based on uh, radon tests alone. So what they did is they they created a, 
a, an algorithm that included a lot of other factors like the geology um, in the state, you know, types of you know, soil types, types of rocks in, in, in particular areas of a state. Um, they used um, aerial maps where uh, the military had flown over and, and taken uh, radiation measurements, you know, coming from the ground as they flew over. Um, uh, and they also looked at different foundation types um, based, that they typically see in one state versus another or one part of a state versus another part of the state. And, and that's really how they identified um, you know, the, the EPA zones. And if you, if you aren't familiar with that map, it, it looks here and you can probably find it in, real easily if you just Google the EPA map. Um, there's some um, verbiage at the bottom of the map and, and it was always there, but unfortunately it doesn't get read because it's in really tiny print. And it basically says that the map should not be used to determine if a home in a given uh, zone should be tested. And the reason is homes with elevated radon have been found in all three zones, zone one, zone two, zone three, and uh, all homes should be tested for radon. So I hear home inspectors all the time who live in, you know, some of those yellow areas that say, well, you know, we just don't have any radon there. Well, just consider the fact that if people believe that, then they don't test. And as long as people don't test, then there's no radon, right? We just don't know about it. Um, so I, I would encourage you not to use this map. It's outdated. It, it, we have better resources now and, and you can access, access them for free. So I'm gonna tell you about that. Um, if you go to the ARST website, you can uh, find a link to the ARST state radon report cards. Now, this database is, is quite large. A um, lot of tests conducted all across the country. It's not as large as we would like it to be um, because um, it still doesn't have a lot of data uh, for tests performed by home inspectors using continuous monitors. Um, there just hasn't been a good structure to get that data um, in, into a single database, um, with the exception of a few state radon programs where they require um, you know, reporting to the state. And, and the problem with that is even some of those states don't want to share that data, uh, perhaps with the uh, database that I'm referring to here. And, and that database is kept by the Center for Disease Control. And so they've collected um, uh, some, some three and a half million radon tests across the country. And, and so after they put this into a database, um, unfortunately, they didn't put it into a map that is very easy for con consumers to just look at and, and quickly determine you know, what's going on in their state. Um, it's it's the, the map on the CDC site is more for researchers and you have to go put in certain parameters and you can look at things different ways. And and, and find different information depending on you know, how you set the metrics. And, and so uh, what the um, uh, ARST organization did while I was there as executive director was um, put together these report cards. And so for example, I'm gonna show you this slide. This is the our state report card for the state of Georgia. If you looked back at the EPA map, I'll, switch back here for just a second. You can see that, oh, there's a little bit of uh, zone one. There are about four, four counties, um, a little bit of zone two and a lot of zone three. But if you, if you look at the report card, you can see that um, here in the state of Georgia, um, that there have been, um, uh, let's see if I can find the number here. Uh, Looking at the number of tests, you can see uh, here that 25% of the tests that have been performed in Georgia uh, showed a concentration of four picures per liter or higher. Um, so it, it also tells you that another 31% um, you know, fell between two and four. Um, so you, you can um, get some information here. You can click through it. Um, if you're gonna put a link on your website, then I would strongly recommend that you go to the ARST um, site, find your state report card, um, or if you if you service multiple states, then you know grab them both, 
and and put those on your website as helpful information and you can always have your staff refer to them and that sort of thing in the event that they're just not convinced um, to take EPA's recommendation that all home buyers should test no matter where they live because elevated radon has been found in all three zones uh, in every state. So there are some other things you can put on your website that aren't typically um, promoted as I was looking through. I mean, people, people are really good at EPA estimates 21,000 Americans die of radon-induced lung cancer every year. And um, they do um, typically put in uh, it's the leading cause of lung cancer in people who don't smoke or the second leading cause of lung cancer. But there's some other facts here that perhaps you can uh, put on your information page about radon that would be helpful. And if you get familiar enough that you can talk about them when, you, when you're engaging with clients, then um, you know, that could be uh, a benefit as well. So first of all, don't forget that radon is not um, only occurring in homes with basements. Um, the, 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 the whole radon issue began in, in Pennsylvania uh, when a worker at the Limerick nu nuclear power plant set off the alarms going into work. Um, and they were trying to figure out why that was happening. And they discovered incredibly high uh, radon concentrations in the home where he lived. And the radon decay products that um, are produced as the gas uh, atoms decay were, were so heavy in the air that his clothing would, would uh, catch them. And as he uh, went into work, that the radiation from those uh, radon decay products were setting off the alarms. And, and if you're familiar with Pennsylvania, then uh, probably the great majority of housing in, in that state has basements. So people began to look at radon as something that you'll find in homes with basements. Um, so yes, there's a myth out there that, um, you know, well, my home doesn't have a basement or the home I'm buying doesn't have a basement, so I don't need to worry about it. Well, elevated radon, uh, just FYI, can be found in, in homes that are built slab on grade, uh, homes built over crawl spaces, uh, combination um, foundation types. So um, don't, you know, it's good to have that information on your site. Um, it also, uh, people think, well, my house is drafty and old, so it's getting a lot of ventilation, so I'm not going to have radon. Uh, drafty houses can have um, uh, elevated radon. Uh, back when the issue was first um, uh, really discovered as a problem in homes in the, in the late 80s, uh, most houses were kind of drafty. Um, and uh, also, if you make them very well insulated, uh, they're typically going to be more airtight in the process. Um, sometimes that can help prevent radon entry, but oftentimes that may um, uh, help radon come in more readily because the pressure difference between the house and the soil um, can draw uh, radon in uh, because of that pressure difference as you make the house tighter. Um, so I would encourage you to perhaps put something, a uh, statement like that on your site. Um, another uh, fact that uh, doesn't often get promoted, but regular exposure to four picocuries per liter of radon, which is the EPA action level, uh, is comparable in risk to smoking eight cigarettes a day or getting 200 chest x-rays per year. Um, a lot of people read that and kind of go, ah, I don't want my kids, even if they're not thinking about themselves, to be exposed to that. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pay you to do a radon test. And then um, the other part of that is the lung cancer risk increases 16% for every three picocuries per liter increase in your long-term average concentration. So um, it, if you move from four picocuries per liter in one home and, and then you go to another home and the average concentration is seven, then the risk is 16% higher for those folks. And it continues to go up 16% uh, for, for every, um, you know, for that every three picocuries per liter increase. So again, cancer it has a lot of factors involved with it. So it's not to say just like smoking, uh, we, we have plenty of data on smoking causes uh, lung cancer. Uh, we have plenty of data that radon exposure causes lung cancer, but um, you never know who's gonna get it. And unfortunately, one of the problems with, with radon is, is people don't know what caused their lung cancer. Um, there are thousands of people who end up with um, lung cancer who never smoked, and they're asking why did that happen? 
Uh, so part of your job also is to be able to spread that message to your clients and, and um, help them be uh, cautious as they move into a new home. Um, so before I'm, I move a little further, I'll, I'll just mention the, the Canadian um, situation. In Canada, they, they, they typically um, don't recommend anyone mitigate the house until they've got 90 days worth of testing. So we we at Ecosense do have some products that that are very helpful for you know home monitoring and electronic that give you uh, professional quality um, uh, hourly readings and uh, they're very affordable and uh, we have a program where you could um, actually profit uh, from selling those to your clients make a commission and give them a little discount in the process. Um, so I'll I'll mention that again as we get toward the end, uh, but that may be uh, an approach. Um, for if you're an inspector in, in Canada, where uh, perhaps um, you know selling a, a, a short-term test uh, during the inspection is not um, as simple as it is here in the U.S. A couple other factors here that you could put on your website, according to the CDC, the risk to children exposed to radon may be almost twice as high as the risk to adults exposed to the same amount of radon. And indoor radon levels do fluctuate throughout the day and night and from month to month and from week to week, uh, excuse me, from month to month, week to week. And uh, um, it's really good uh, to get, you know, continuous monitoring, um, you know, for a longer period of time, uh, even if you are restricted to a two or three day test for a real estate transaction. Another opportunity to perhaps sell your client a long term monitor. Uh, after you explain to them, hey, you know, here are your results. We did everything according to the protocol, took all the proper precautions to get you a good test, but we were limited by being able to test for only a two or three day window um, because of the need to close the sale, right? So uh, keep that in mind. Um, the the next thing I want to mention, and I'll, I'll try to speed up here at least as I go through my slides uh, to make sure I don't keep you too late. Um, is a, a radon warning statement that you could put in your inspection agreements. And, and basically, this would just be something you put in your uh, basic contract, uh, your agreement that they go through and, and, and sign. And it, it would say something like the US EPA, the Center for Disease Control, you could add in your state health department because they all make the same recommendation. Uh, strongly recommend that all home buyers have an indoor radon test performed prior to purchase or taking occupancy and recommend mitigation if the levels are uh, above uh, or at or above four peak and curious per liter. And uh, there's another portion of that you can see about all homes should be tested for radon regardless of geographic location or foundation uh, type and gives a little explanation why. Um, and, and then to add a little more um, persuasion uh, to to that statement is you just have them sign off. So you're not you're not pushing it. You're just giving them information, and they would sign off that um, I choose to have a radon test performed as part of the home inspection for an additional fee or whatever you decide to charge them, or not have a radon test performed and assume all liability and consequences for my decision. Um, and then there's some other information you could choose to put in there or not. Uh, for example, properly installed radon control systems will permanently reduce radon um, concentrations up to 99% uh, because most systems prevent uh, soil air from entering the house. You may also notice other air quality improvements, such as uh, lower humidity, because that damp air from uh, below the slab or from the crawl space can't come in anymore. Um, so you get some added benefit there. Um, radon control systems will not decrease the, the appraisal value of the home. Um, in fact, it's, it's commonly accepted as a home improvement. If you have a system that's controlling the radon, that's even better than, you know, one that's kind of hovering in, particularly in that, that, uh, three to four, uh, range that, you know, can go up at certain times, depending on, um, seasons and, you know, how you're using your air handler and, and that sort of thing. Um, so, I, here's why I know this works. Um, back in, um, oh, I can't remember how many years. It's back in the 2000s. Um, I, I created a, a, um, a draft for a uh, regulation 
uh, called the Illinois Radon Awareness Act. And if, you, if you're familiar with Gloria Leonards, who's a very advocate, uh, very strong advocate for having people test, she, she was unfortunate enough to lose her husband to lung cancer and he didn't smoke um, and discovered after the fact that they'd been living in high radon for many years. Uh, so um, she took uh, this, this format uh, to the state legislature and was successful uh, with a, a group of uh, professionals like yourselves in getting it passed through the uh, Illinois uh, General Assembly. And so the Illinois Radon Awareness Act mandated disclosure of radon risks and uh, during a transaction. And uh, it also um, uh, was very successful. So it still has the disclosure. You have to sign off on it. All the things that I just described that you put in your inspection agreement are in this document that has to be provided to every home uh, buyer, uh, either by the agent or by the seller if they're selling their own home, uh, by law in the state of Illinois. Um, so this passed in 2008. And, and if you look uh, on this particular slide, you can see that somewhere around in here in, in, in 2008, and we were in a housing um slump there because the economy had we were in a recession and you know we weren't really selling a lot of houses at that time but if you look at what happened after that with the number of uh, radon tests performed and and how it's been going up um uh it's it's been going up significantly since 2008 and um the at least the latest data i have which uh is a few years old uh indicates that the, the increase in the number of radon tests uh, during the real estate transaction went from 8% to 55%, just as a result of this notification, this information, and the fact that they had the initial awful, I want it or I don't assume all the liability. Um, so um, I, I encourage you to take a look at that as part of your inspection agreement. Um, this approach uh, also, obviously, um, uh, resulted in a lot of mitigation systems being installed. If you look here around 2008, you can see, uh, and this was even during that period where home sales were down because of the economy. And then you look and see that steady growth in, in mitigations every year. Uh, that's because people in Illinois are getting this information um, on every home sale uh, and it's producing results. Um, Minnesota is the other state that has passed a similar uh, act. It's pretty much the same. The wording is a little different, uh, but you can see um, here that uh, uh, mitigation systems also really uh, took a, uh, an increase here um, in, in 2014, and uh, their data shows that it continues to climb. Um, so I, I encourage you to, um, uh, to consider that as a, as a possibility for your inspection agreement. All right. The next thing, uh, as you see on this slide, is if your result, if the result that you're giving to your client when you do a radon test is elevated, it's at or above the EPA action level, then be sure you sell them the post mitigation test. Um, a lot of home inspectors kind of leave this opportunity on the table, and I know that because I, I interview them regularly and, and ask them, well, how, how come you're not going after that? And you know you, they get busy and they're working on the other stuff and then they just don't really think about it. So so here's the situation. And you all know it. If the if the test comes back high, the seller is going to have to pay a mitigator to come in and do the mitigation. And there needs to be a test result after the mitigation that indicates that the mitigation was successful. And once that result comes in, then the deal can close and and um, um, then the new buyer is going to move in. Uh, so it's it, it's imperative here that you uh, let your home buyer, the one you're working for, know that if the test results on the test you did perform are elevated, that they need to hire you to come back and, and, and do that post-mitigation test. They trusted you to do the pre-mitigation test. They, they uh, should trust you to do the post-mitigation test. You'll come back and do that for an additional fee of what you, you deem appropriate. And um, and you tell them the, the reason is because they can count on you. You're their advocate, not the mitigator that's installing the system or whoever the agent may hire or whatever. You're their advocate. 
And, and the other value for you coming back is that you can inspect the mitigation system and um, and determine you know visual inspection like everything else you do whether it meets the standards um, and, and that is something that is is really important uh, based on on my experience um, I, I've got here this buyer needed you when when I was um, executive director at Arston NRPP um, all of the time we would get complaints from mitigators uh, about mitigators who installed a system, something like this, where they violated the standards and, and didn't do uh, the job uh, the way it should be. But unfortunately, those complaints came in from the buyer of the home after they had closed, they had moved in, they got through all the excitement and stress of the deal, and, and they looked around and went, oh, yeah, I got a mitigation system. Let me take a look and check this out a little more. And then they go, oh my gosh, this doesn't look right. And they Google this and 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 start to find out, wow, my mitigation system is 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 not up to the standard. So then they file a complaint. Um, so here, here's an opportunity for you to be again your your buyer's advocate to come back and, and inspect the system. Um, there's a, a and something additional you can can you know put in your toolbox and that is to get certified as a mitigation compliance inspector um this is a an nrpp certification where uh you take a a course and and actually get a certification uh for this and with that you actually get a um an app that uh you can perform a checklist inspection um and uh provide that to your client it goes into nrpp um, you can give a copy to your client. And um, so you've got an extra credential um, for uh, doing that valuable inspection. Um, so the if you look on the uh, ARST, or actually the NRPP website, National Radon Proficiency Program, um, you can find all the information about what they call the Soil Gas Mitigation Compliance Inspector. And... Um, uh, they'll describe there, as you see here, that uh, their role is to represent home buyers by verifying if the system meets the minimum standards, uh, help resolve citizen complaints to NRPP. So there could also be an opportunity for you to go out and and if NRPP is doing, a, um, you know, investigating a complaint with somebody who's not willing to go back out and 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 work with their client, which does happen, um, then you could perhaps help with that and get paid for it. And then assist state radon programs with compliance enforcement. Uh, state of Indiana is a state, and there are some others looking at it that are actually paying um, compliance inspectors to do uh, inspections as part of their state radon program. Uh, prerequisites, I won't spend a, a lot of time on that here, but you can see that uh, um, you really, if you are certified as a measurement professional, then that's the, the most important prerequisite. Um, and then you're going to take an eight-hour course. Um, it's it's uh, an affordable course through a number of different providers. Um, and then uh, you have to you do have to take a t uh, an exam. And like anything else, there's some continuing education that you'll need to uh, take care of every two years. It's a two-year certification. So I invite you to check that out. Okay. And then uh, finally, I, I would suggest to you to to uh, provide the the highest quality test that you can, and and I, this is a little bit of a sales pitch, but it's also something that I, I want you to just be familiar with, just for your own benefit when you're out looking at radon monitors. And perhaps some of you are new folks, and, and you're looking at which equipment to get, or maybe you're you've been at this for quite a while, and and you need to uh, buy some more equipment because your business is growing, or some of it's gotten old. <clears throat> the the sensitivity or what I prefer to call counting efficiency on um, the uh, Radon I Pro that Ecosense sells is 30 counts per hour per peak Curie per liter. And you you may not, or you may uh, be real familiar with what that means. Um, but if you look at other units out there that, that are commonly used in real estate testing by professionals like yourselves, um, they don't have near this counting efficiency. And and what that means is, um, if you if you gather all the random counts that would occur at a given radon concentration, you know, throughout the course of a, a two or three day test, 
um, you know, because it is random radiation counting. Um, a after two or three days, then those those lower efficiency detectors uh, will give you a, a pretty good number. Um, you they could be better if they had a great, greater um, detector efficiency. But the real benefit of a, a continuous monitor is that you get hourly readings that can help you look at trends and what occurred during the environment while the test was going on. Um, so I'll give you a little um, description here, and you don't need to worry about the math. Um, I'll be glad to share this with you. But uh, basically, uh, what they do is, what's the counting error? And, and in this, I'm talking about for one hour, not for 48 hours, one hour. So how, how valuable are the one hour readings? So um, if the radon reading with a, with a radon I pro uh, or uh, even our homeowner units uh, is four peak curies per liter, then a two sigma error, which means there's a 95% confidence level is that the reading falls between 3.3 and 4.7. So for, for such a short time window, um, that's a that's pretty close. I mean, yeah, there's an error in every measure, but um, between 3.3 and 4.7, if it's reading four, could be a little less, could be a little more, uh, but that's pretty close. By comparison, if you look at say a, a 1028, which gives you 2.7 counts per hour per picocuri per liter, then a four picocuri per liter reading for the hour. Again, I'm, let me stress for the hour. Um, you know, it could be as low as 1.4 or as high as 6.6 because of the error involved, because you're getting so um, so, so many less uh, counts per hour per picocuri per liter. So this 10.8 is based at, at four picocuri per liter concentration. That's all the counts you're typically going to get on average uh, with that detector. So you can see the error bar is much greater. Um, if you look at... Uh, uh, another real popular uh, unit that's out there, um, it gets a little higher. It's at 3.7 counts per hour per picocuri per liter. So it gets one more count per hour for every picocuri li per, per liter. But you can still see that there's a, you know, that one hour number is plus or minus 54%. Uh, so it could be as low as 1.8 or as high as 6.2. So the value of, of, um, uh, of having that higher detector efficiency really shows up when you're looking at, at the data you're providing. And the whole reason you want to provide uh, a test result with a continuous monitor is to give your, your clients good data. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'm going to close out and then I'm going to take some questions because I see we've got quite a few in, in the chat and I don't want to keep you running um, you know, any longer than we really need to because I very much appreciate your time. Um, if you go to this particular, uh, whoop, well, I guess it won't let me go there. All right, there's an ecosense.io slash pages slash InterNACHI. Um, and um, if you go there, you're going to go to a site that we created special, uh, especially for InterNACHI, and you can get uh, discounts off our products because you're an InterNACHI member. Um, the other thing I, I want to share with you is if you use this code right here, Dallas95, if you go to go to our site, then um, you'll get, for the next 48 hours, you'll get $95 off our, our Radon iPro. Uh, our Radon iPro is $795 regularly, so that's going to bring it down to $700. Um, and you can see your one of the things that our Radon iPro does is it will enable you to prepare easily a, a um, uh, an ARST uh, compliant uh, or a, a report that's compliant with the ANSI R standards. So we've got a, a, an app that you'd communicate with the device when you're in the field. Uh, we've got a dashboard that helps you manage your devices and your technicians, um, your admin staff or whoever can do that. From there, you can set up templates um, for the reports um, and uh, customize them for specific uh, uh, technicians that you have as part of your business. Uh, so there's there's um, uh, a lot of uh, useful um, functions between the uh, admin app and the um, the smartphone app. So I encourage you to take a look at that on our website. And, and if you want to get a deal on those, 
there they are. So I'm going to come over here to, I've got some in chat and I've got some in questions and answers. So one question that came up is, does radon give lung cancer to non-smokers? Yes. Um, when I say that radon is the number one cause of lung cancer in people who never smoked, that is a true statement and they have the data to back it up. And what we're seeing now that, that kind of got lost in the data uh, for a long time is you know, so many people smoke cigarettes for so long that it was kind of hard to single out um, you know, those folks who never smoked. Um, and they were certainly outnumbered. Um, but um, the now that fewer people are smoking cigarettes, we're, we're seeing a lot of people who have developed lung cancer who never smoked cigarettes. And um, the data, uh, epidemiology data that's been collected for quite a long time, and not just from the United States, but from all over the world, uh, it's been pulled together, studied and studied and studied. Uh, shows indeed that um, radon does cause uh, lung cancer in, in non-smokers. So it, 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 to be clear, it's it's like smoking. You know, there are people who puff on cigarettes, um, you know, maybe do a pack or a half, pack and a half a day for live to be 90 years old and something else killed them. Um, and, and you say, well, it didn't hurt them. But then there are a whole lot of people who, um, um, you know, that was the cause of their their death. Um, so let me get to another one here. Oop, chat. Move up here to the top, bear with me. So uh, let's see. Um, oh, I got one from uh, uh, Russell. He he just mentioned and and uh, to 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 um, I don't know to AJ but just came across this webinar today and his webinar on the seventeenth uh, would be a good complimentary webinar to this one. Um, any any way or appropriate to, or is it appropriate to plug that webinar at the end of this one? Uh, I I don't think that's a problem. AJ will take care of that. Um, Good thing about Internachi is they're always working real hard to make sure that uh, uh, you guys get as much helpful information as possible. Ah, here's one from Daniel who says, over the summer, I encapsulated my crawl space and my Radon Eye Pro indicates 14 to 20 picky curies per liter. Um, that can happen. Um, the, the reason is, 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 Sealing the soil to the um, area above that encapsulation is impossible. You can do what visually looks like, oh, okay, I did a great job. And uh, I would rather imagine that you or whoever did it did a great job. But the reason caulking and sealing uh, doesn't get recommended as a mitigation approach is, is because it's been proven for decades that it just doesn't do the job. And the reason is what's causing radon to come in is the pressure difference between uh, below that encapsulation and um, in, in this case, and the space above it. So um, there are places somewhere where that pressure difference, air will always go from a higher pressure to a lower pressure. And there's some place where that um, you know, radon is being sucked into the house and it's um, it, it's being drawn in. And perhaps um, that encapsulation has changed that pressure uh, relationship and made it even stronger. Um, so what really needs to happen, and one of the things we're trying to do a better job in, in overall in educating those encapsulation contractors is that, you know, do, do some radon investigation beforehand, but it's real easy to to plan at least for drawing air from under, depressurizing from underneath that encapsulation um, to take care of the radon. Um, I'll, I'll give my information out if you'd like to talk about that some more. And, and um, but that that's what's going on. Um, let's see, got another one for Russell. I had a client 
say no to a radon test when uh, taking the order. However, I always have a device ready to deploy, as many have changed their view at date and time of the inspection. Yes. Uh, thank you, Russell. That's a, a, a something I, I should have mentioned is, is be ready. Um, you know, you, you want to be careful that even if you place um, a device like our uh, eco tracker or a um, we, we've got a, a new, very affordable homeowner device that's uh, uh, called an eco blue. Um, if you just place it out while you're doing the inspection, um, it's going to indicate that they've got radon because the response function is is good enough at 30 counts per hour per peak carrier per liter that you're going to get some data in, in that short time. Again, it's not averaging over a long window, but at least it may indicate to the client that, wow, well, I, I should test. Or as you as you probably are doing, Russell, you're, you're able to talk to them a little bit while you're there. And once they've thought about it a little more and listened to you, uh, then then you have that um, you know opportunity. So you don't want to be caught and say, "Oh, I didn't bring a radon monitor to do the test." So I'll always be prepared uh, that you can do the test. Um, I, I've known inspectors over the years who would play a video. There are a couple of them out there of lung cancer uh, victims who never smoked, who are very compelling. Um, uh, you know, while they're walking around, maybe hey, I'm going to start down, you know, in the basement and look at this. If you want to stay here and, you know, watch this, if the client is actually there, uh, watch this video for a couple minutes and, and um, maybe helpful, or maybe you have another video or uh, of just, you know, talking about the, the health risk. But there are ways you can convince them, um, you know, to test. Again, it's it's a matter of the information. That's why I like that, that um, radon warning statement in the inspection agreement. It makes them stop and think and and um uh so you you want to get them to uh to do that and sign off at some point no i, I don't want it and before they put that initial they kind of go well you know i maybe maybe it is important because i'm having to sign off uh that i don't want it um okay another one here in addition to online yes or no radon agreements if the client is present uh, my inspectors and I ask a confirmed radon testing is um, no directly and answer any radon uh, questions. Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of on the same vein. Um, yeah, it, it's a dialogue sometimes. And if you if you're able to get in front of them, um, you know, if you can train your staff to, to do that while they're ordering and, and they can get the person uh, long enough to, to, to have that conversation fine. I, I know sometimes the real estate agents do the ordering. Um, hopefully those days are, uh, I mean, we've come to a time where that's less than it used to be, where the agents wanted to control everything. And uh, But uh, perhaps um, your, your staff can, can also give them a little information or send them a link to something uh, where they can make that decision. But there's nothing like face-to-face -face conversation. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, let's see. Something about the, if you are NRPP certified, reach out to local realtor groups. Um, okay. So uh, Russell, I think is doing uh, the, is it Russell who's doing the next webinar? I think so. Um, yeah. Realtor groups are, are also an important target. Um, particularly if you're in an area where radon testing isn't as common as in others and you're, you're trying to work there. Remember, there was time when radon testing wasn't common anywhere. Um, so yeah, educating the agents where they're not fearful. Um, they're, my gosh, this has been going on for you know, since since the late 80s, early 90s, uh, radon testing uh, doesn't kill deals. It's easily fixed. The homes can be mitigated um, within the time constraints of the transaction, and um, people just move on. It's like anything else you find. Uh, it's all uh, solvable and and uh, no reason to for the agents to fear it. Um, yes. Oh. Another point, when you're out doing um, uh, realtor presentations, if you can kind of document that and what you are, um, you know, what you're teaching to the or, or information you're giving to the agents, 
uh, if you're in our PP certified, they do have what they call a category two, um, which I, I'll be glad to give you a um, something that you can submit for category two, e even for attending this webinar for the hour. Um, if, if you're spending your time teaching a radon class uh, to real estate agents, for example, um, then uh, that category two doesn't require an exam, you know, a quiz as part of the, the, the course. Uh, like a category one does. And there's a certain number of credit hours uh, that, that um, can be that category two. So uh, talking uh, to real estate agents in a formal presentation uh, for an hour, uh, can can you can document that and send it in uh, to NRPP to get an hour CE for that presentation. Ah, okay. That's a, I just had a question here. Does EcoSense offer a rental program? It's funny you should bring that up. We are we are in the midst of conversations about that right now. Um, it, it it actually came up because uh, one of our um, conversations here recently with a large company um, uh, that we were you know selling our services to um, said, well, they're actually leasing units from one of our competitors and wanted to know if we could uh, work out something like that. Um, and uh, yes, we can. Um, I, I don't have it put together yet, but if you will, um, uh, if you will um, uh, email me and I'll give you my email address here in just a second, then uh, I'll, I'll stay in touch with you. And as we get that um, uh, put together here this year at some point, then uh, uh, I'll be sure to let you know. Uh, let's see, QA, got some more over here in QA. Sean, how many short-term and long-term radon testers would you recommend a home inspector have in stock? Ah, um, if you're just starting out, well, I, I, I think if you're just starting out, it would kind of depend, um, Sean, if you'll text me in kind of what state you're in, that would also help. Um, I, I, I would say you need it, it, at least a couple of, of um, you know, radon eye pros or, or short, you know, to do short term tests with, um, because if, you, if you've got one out testing for two days, then you're out of business <laughs> as far as doing radon tests. Uh, so a couple, I think, would be the minimum you'd want to have, um, even if you're not doing a lot of lot of testing to begin with. Um, you know, it's you're in a business, and and that's an investment, and and you know your objective would obviously be, as you know, um, to keep them busy. Um, so I would say that as far as the, those long term devices, you know, I, I I talk to a lot of inspectors these days that you know keep a few, um, you know, to have there where they can they can um, uh, sell them to their clients and 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 make something because again it's face to face you get it in front of them. Uh, so you can order some from us that way. Uh, the other thing is, if you're on our referral club, then basically you can um, you can show them one and and say, look, if you want to go here and order on my, uh, you know, from my page, we'll give you a landing page. If you're part of the referral club, order one of these home units, then um, uh, you'll get a discount or, or the lowest price if we've got a special Amazon sale or something like that. But you'll get a commission on it. Um, and you, you'll actually have a little uh, dashboard that keeps track of where you can see uh, the sales that have come through your code, uh, whether it's from your website uh, to, to your particular landing page or whether you just gave somebody the code uh, on a card or, or whatever and they typed it into our website. You, you will get the credit on it, and we pay those out um, every month, uh, typically via PayPal or, or if you want it, go to your bank. We can take your routing number and do that, too. Um, so I, I would certainly invite you to, you know, get out and sell them and be aggressive, but yet two, I think would be the very minimum. Uh, if you live in, uh, let's see, did I see a state come in? Um, you know, if you live in a state where, where radon testing is rather, uh, common, then, you know, you may want to get a, a, a third one. Um, if, you know, if you're living in Arizona, then, you know, I would say probably, you know, until that market gets uh, a little more mature then maybe two is plenty. Um, let's see. Uh, did I get it? Did I get all of those questions? Um, okay. I think I got everything. If you 
<clears throat> I'm going to clear these off here. Um, anybody else have any question before we sign off? I'm, I see we're at 556, so I'm, we're getting up toward the hour, and I, I promised I wasn't going to keep you guys longer than I uh, needed to get through the material and answer questions. Um, all right. So I'm going to give you my email address. And um, it's pretty simple. It's it, it, my, you can see my name on the, on the screen there. It's Dallas Jones. But my email address is just D Jones, D J O N E S, at Ecosense. It's not dot com, it's dot io, ecosense dot io, d jones at ecosense dot io. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll type it in here if you guys want to uh, take a look. Um, I'll even put my phone number. So I, I really want to thank you for your time. I want to thank. Um, AJ and Internachi for giving me the opportunity. I hope I get invited to come back and and perhaps um, uh, provide some information on some other related topics, uh, things uh, particularly with radon. Um, that's been my business for most of my life. <laughs> so um, if I can be of value to you in any way, then I hope you'll you'll email me and I will get back to you. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you.